Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and I want to cover leveling up in Destiny 2 Year 3. So, as of October 1st, Shadowkeep came out. There's been a couple of changes the way some things are going to work, so I'm going to try and cover as much as I can, as efficiently as I can. Now, one thing to make note of, when I talk about gear score, I mean the level of your actual items, and not your power level, because your power level is now affected by this plus 5 bonus, you can see it on screen. I'm talking about the white number next to it, 750 gear. The bonus comes from your artifact. That is a new seasonal thing. Basically, the more you play, you're going to be slowly giving yourself an overall bonus power level. So you can see my bonus power is plus 5 on my artifact, and that is an account-wide thing. So even if I go long on... So I played another character. That's why this character, which is 750 gear across the board, like everybody else is going to start at, is 755. Your effective level in an activity is your power level, but your gear score is separate. So, talking about gear score, just wanted to clarify that in the beginning. If you guys have questions about the artifact, leave those below. I might even do a separate video, but for now I'm just talking about leveling up and gear score. The bonus, just ignore it. So your gear score is going to start at 750. There are going to be different caps as you level up this year. So the first one for this season is going to be your soft cap. So, the soft cap is going to be any activity you do... Dropping gear is going to take you from 750 to 900. That is going to be the soft cap. Whether I want to go to the European Dead Zone and do a Lost Sector. Whether I want to run Strikes in the Vanguard Strike playlist. Whether I want to play Crucible matches and I want to go play some Control. Or I got Shadow Keep and I want to go through the Shadow Keep campaign. Any activity you do, any drop that you get is going to continually be above your gear score level and continue to increase your level all the way up to 900. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can be ultra efficient. Some people are saying the Vanguard Strike playlist because you're killing a lot of enemies, so drops will happen throughout. You get a chest at the end, you're going to get a couple drops from there, and you just keep running strikes. If you want to do it that way, you can, all the way up to 900. If you're a Shadow Keep player, my recommendation, though, is play the campaign. If you play it at the power level that you start at, it actually feels like the challenge is fair. It's a fun campaign. And if you're over, if you're like 900 when you start the campaign, it's probably going to feel a little bit easier, I'll be honest. But if you if you play through it naturally, it's going to feel really cool. Campaign's a lot of fun. And you get some boosts from the campaign. I was like 775 or something as I was going through. And when I was playing through the campaign, I got a boost. One of my pieces of gear dropped at like 815. It was like a kind of a story gear, story piece of gear that you need to get. But the first piece dropped at 815. That was a big boost in power level, which again upped my average. And therefore my drops got still, you know, keep kept going higher. By the time I was done, I had a little bit more to do. I kept playing on the moon. I ran a couple strikes. But basically you just have to get up to 900 power level. That's what you're going for. That is the soft cap and that is when the game changes. So I'm going to switch over to a character who is like 901, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so you will have noticed the director has changed. There's all these little yellow icons everywhere. Those are going to be your sources of powerful gear. So the next stage of your power level climb is going to be from 900 to 950. This is going to be your powerful gear cap. Now, what is going to get you up to 950? Well, you've got one thing called Prime Engrams before I even get into the challenges. Prime Engrams are an engram that will drop just sporadically. And when, you, when it drops, it will be tied to your light level. So, say I'm... So now you can see my gear score is 901. Bonus is still there, as I said, that is account wide. But I'm currently 901. Prime Engrams drop three above your gear score level. And they just drop sporadically throughout. So as you're playing through and doing different activities and other things, you'll occasionally just get a prime engram to drop. So sometimes they could be coming from um, enemies or end of strikes or just a random guy in the middle of a mission. You never know, but they can drop from basically anywhere. And the nice thing about prime engrams, they're going to continue to help you out just by playing normal activities. So it's not just like certain things that you have to do. So that will drop at plus three. So say that one drops at 904, it will up appear up here in my engram slot. And as soon as you get that, if you're in the middle of a mission, obviously finish the mission. But as soon as you as soon as you get a prime engram, it is beneficial for you to go turn it in quickly because it is actually tied to a specific power level. You don't want to go do a whole bunch of the things I'm about to tell you and then go turn in your prime engram because you might be over that level and not get the benefit from it. So if you do see a prime engram drop, it is important to make sure you go to the tower, talk to the cryptarch, which if you're new, uh, once you hit 900, the cryptarch is pretty close to the landing zone right here. Go talk to him 
and he's going to be the one who's going to decrypt that engram and give you a piece of gear. So that is an important thing to make note of. Prime engrams, do not wait on those. Make sure you turn those in quickly. Now, all the little yellow icons are related to weekly challenges. Now, weekly challenges are exactly that. Each week on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, the game goes through a weekly reset. It resets all of these activities. It resets the raid, so you can go get drops in there. It's going to reset all of those activities. Now, weekly challenges are something you cannot continuously do all week long. You get one run at this, and then you get this drop, and you're done, and you can go move on to other activities. So, take strikes, for example. You could run strikes all the way up to 900 if you want to, but once you get 900, this challenge underscore will show up at the bottom. Complete strikes using the same subclass element as the currently active elemental burn. So if I'm right here and I see Vanguard strikes, Solar Singe is what it's talking about. So if I come up here and I equip a solar subclass and I complete three strikes as a solar subclass and I match that burn, then I'm gonna get a powerful gear drop. Now powerful gear, Tier 1, it's going to be pretty similar to a Prime Engram. It's going to be plus 3, it might be plus 2, but generally they're about plus 3 as well. And it's going to drop for any slot. Remember, all of these are still random. So, whether it's a Prime Engram, whether it's a Powerful Engram, when one of those drops, it's going to drop for any of your 8 slots. It could be a class item, it could be a heavy weapon, it could be a helmet. doesn't really matter. Now, sometimes you may feel like you get more benefit out of some of these than others, so I kind of want to explain why. My gear score is 901. That is the average of all my gear. Some may be higher, some may be lower. So if I get a powerful gear drop from doing those three strikes, and I get it at 904. Well, if I get a 904 class item, and my current class item is 900, well, that's a four-level boost. That's even more than I expected. That's a nice little bonus. So that actually takes me up a little more than I expected. That's a good thing. But for example, it's over here on my energy weapon. I get another energy weapon from that powerful gear drop, and now I only get a one level boost. That's just how the cookie crumbles, and it is just going to be random. If I got a kinetic weapon, it'd be a plus two. If I got the gauntlets, it would be plus three. If I got a chest piece, it would be plus four. Up here, it would be plus two. So if you take that 904 and you average it out, it's likely to help you in some place or another, unless you just have a really oddball outlier from, say, like an exotic quest or something. Most of the time, it may help you a little more or a little less, depending on where that drop goes, but you will be getting some drops that increase your power level. Your Tier 1 powerful gear options are as follows. Three Vanguard Strikes, matching the Elemental Burn. Make sure you match that, please. I can't tell you how many people I've run into that aren't running the right one. Nightfall, the Ordeal. Uh, running Nightfall the Ordeal, you can run it at low level five times, where the higher the difficulty, the more progress you will make. Now, one thing I will state right now, hopefully this is patched soon, but right now, if I did the strikes and I got my powerful gear from this, if I came over here and then my second thing was I did the Nightfalls, and then I got powerful gear here, it's not dropping as a powerful gear drop. So, until you see otherwise, probably just do your strikes and save off on this Nightfall for just a little bit. And don't worry about the pinnacle gear, I will come back to that in a little bit. But this should be fixed later on, so you should be able to run three strikes, even run five low-level nightfalls, and this is what I'm talking about. 950, basic level. Now, we ran it at 920 yesterday on another character that I had that was a little higher. It was a challenge, but we eventually got through. That counted for two. So, first nightfall was one of five. When we finished the next higher difficulty at 920, then I was three of five. So, you're going to be able to get some nice drops in here the higher level you get. Some of that stuff will get easier. Other things for Tier 1 are going to be your core matches, which are going to be these playlists in the middle, and then also Crucible Labs. And then you've also got the Rotators. So you've got a 6v6. It's a playlist that each week will have a new mode. And then over here, it's a 4v4 playlist. Again, each week, a different mode. Your Rotator matches, you get four matches in there. So say I do four matches of Clash, I'll get my Powerful Gear Tier 1 drop for the Rotator matches. And then I do four matches of Control, I'll get my Powerful Gear Tier 1 drop from the core matches. So again, two drops in there. Each week, you're going to have a different Flashpoint. Flashpoint, it's called Flashpoint, but it may have changed up a little bit. But basically, you're going to go to a planet, and you're going to do different activities. Public events, uh, go finish Lost Sectors, finish Heroic Adventures. Those are all going to give you progress within this planet. And then when you get to 100%, you'll come down to the, the planet vendor, and you're going to pick up a powerful gear tier 1 drop from him as well. 
The other, the other place you're going to have some powerful gear tier 1 drops are going to be actually in the tower. So your different vendors are going to have basically bounties that you need to do. If you do 8 bounties within a week, at each of these vendors, you'll get a powerful gear tier 1 drop here as well. So Banshee, Shax will be Crucible, Zavala will be related to Vanguard, like Strikes and things like that. And then the Drifter will be related to Gambit. All of those are tier 1. And all you have to do is go pick up the bounties at them, which are going to, for one, give you experience, which is going to help your artifact level up and your seasonal ranks, which is always a good thing. So if you are doing activities, make sure you have as many bounties on you as possible so you're continually making progress on your artifact, on your season ranks. Bounties are always going to be a good thing to make sure you have. So just make sure you swing by the tower. If I'm going to go play Crucible for a while, go grab some Crucible bounties. So when I go play those matches, I've actually got some Crucible bounties like these to go work on so I can make extra progress. Now, that's tier one. Tier two, we only have two current sources right now and that may change a little bit later. But tier two right now, we've got clan EXP. Earn 5,000 EXP for your clan. If you finish 5,000 clan EXP, you're gonna get a tier two drop. Now, the only difference between tier one and tier two right now seems to be what I've been told and seen myself as well. Tier one is that like two to three range, most likely three. Tier 2 is 4. I haven't seen anything drop at plus 5, but at least it's a plus 4 drop. So it's a little bigger boost. This one will probably take a little longer to compete. And the other place we have a tier 2 drop right now is Gambit. Three Gambit matches, whether it's Gambit or Gambit Prime. Three matches will provide a powerful gear tier 2 drop, so that'll be worth a plus 4. So currently this is what we have is tier 1 and tier 2. I don't know if there's going to be a tier 3 later. We'll just have to see. Uh, but the other way that you're going to be able to get gear is going to be a pinnacle reward. Now, this is going to be a very short list of activities that has these. So, pinnacle gear is going to be, as I said previously, the powerful gear cap is 950. So, any of these powerful gear drops will eventually get you to 950. If you play enough, knock them out every week. Work on your prime engrams that are getting you up there as well. Now, I don't know if prime engrams are going to help you above 950. I kind of assume that they're not going to. Uh, but at about 950, that is when you basically hit a pretty hard wall. The only way to go from 950, and I'm still talking about gear score, not the bonus you get from the artifact, your gear score from 950 to actually having weapons and armor that are nine up to 960 is going to be pinnacle gear drops. These are going to come from the hardest sources in the game. Whether it is this Nightfall with 100,000 points, that's going to be one of them. The other things I imagine being up there are the most difficult nightmare hunts. That's a new activity on Shadowkeep on the moon. And those are going to be like 950 or 980 power level. Those are going to be difficult because you're already going to be maxed just to even attempt those. Another thing is going to be the raid. It's one of the hardest things in the game, but it's also one of the most fun. Six person activity, a lot of coordination, a lot of teamwork, usually cool mechanics. They're amazing things to do, but they're difficult. So that's going to be one of the places for pinnacle activities. So it's usually going to be the most difficult activities, the raids, potentially the dungeon that is going to be coming with Shadowkeep as well. Um, basically, it's usually just the hardest activities that you can do are going to get you pinnacle gear. And those are the only drops that are going to take your gear score and basically give you any drop of gear from 950 to 960. When you get to 960, your gear score cannot get any higher. That is as high as it goes. But as you've been playing through all of these activities you've been working on, you'll be getting experience across all of your characters, because remember this artifact is season-wide, and you'll get your power bonus. The power bonus, as I said, is going to be account-wide, and it's going to be effective on top. So say my gear score was 960, and for some reason I only had a plus 5 power bonus, but there's no way I would, I would have done all that and not be much higher. But even if my gear score is 960, really I would be 965 with that power bonus. So your artifact is always giving you a little bonus just from all the things that you do. And since that is based on experience, it's going to be, it will behoove you and benefit you to always be working on bounties for any activity you do. If you go to the, you know, say you go to Earth this week, go to Devrim K, pick up three of his bounties. So when you're working on activities on that planet, you knock out those bounties, get a little extra experience on top. Always make sure you've got bounties for everything you do. That will help you speed up the process on your artifact and also on your season pass and unlock things in there. Experience is not going to give you a higher level, but it is going to help you get a higher bonus level, which will benefit you as well. So, that is basically it when it comes to leveling. 750 to 900, soft cap. 
anything you want to do, campaign, strike, story, crucible, doesn't matter. 900 to 950, just these powerful challenges. And if you knock everything out for the week, then your benefit is either going to be maybe go try another character, see if you want to do that, or um, just if you're playing those activities, every so often you will get a prime ingram drop. But at that point, it will be pretty slow. Each Tuesday, it will reset. Once you get up to 950, then it is truly going to be only those in-game pinnacle activities that are going to take you from 950 to 960. And remember, if you're doing anything, if you're running strikes, go get bounties from Zavala so you get bonus the bonus experience for doing strikes. If you're running crucible matches, go get bounties from Shaxx so you get bonuses for the activities and things that you do within those crucible matches. So bounties are going to help you level up and get experience towards that artifact and also progression on that season rank. And then the powerful gear is going to help you get that gear. So 900 soft, 950 hard cap, or powerful gap, and then pinnacle absolute top is 960. So I hope this was beneficial, kind of a decent explanation for you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the video. I'll have more stuff coming. Uh, just wanted to play for a couple days. Probably could have got a couple videos out, but trying to enjoy it. So you guys can find me on Twitch and Twitter, Tibantas on both, right here on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Leave a comment if you have thoughts, opinions, questions, or otherwise that can be beneficial to others. If anything changes, check the comments. I'll put a pinned one below. That will be down there with any updates like glitches and things like that that seem to be good, bad, or otherwise, or things that have been fixed. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. I've got a lot of content to come to you with Shadowkeep, quests, guides, and other things. So thank you all for tuning in. Have a great one. I will see you soon. Enjoy your week and your grind and Shadowkeep because, honestly, it's pretty awesome. So have a good one. I'll see you soon.